So I had a completely different video planned for today. And uh, that literally went up in smoke when one of my blasters caught fire. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I'm sure it's fixable. But uh, until then, let's talk about these things. Yes, these things. If you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months, you have no idea what I'm holding, but these are out of darts' rival Jupiter pistols. And they're, they're awesome. Do you really expect me to say anything else other than they're awesome? I have two of them. And trust me, these were not easy to get because so many people have been buying these things and there's only so many that out of darts could put out at once because they're all 3D printed by him that, uh, <laughs> I actually had to get them in two separate batches and basically had to just stalk his website every day for a good solid month until I finally got my hands on these, but was it worth it? Well, I love these things. Obviously, I love these things. I love all things pistols. I love small blasters that pack a lot of firepower, and trust me, these fit the bill, but there are some annoyances and some gripes, and I will get to those, but seriously, for what these things are, there's almost nothing else like it in the hobby. Let's start off with one of the first big contention points, though, and that is the price. The kit, as in buying one of these by itself, although he does offer the option to sell them completed, honestly, that's probably not going to happen all that much because all of these are produced by Out of Darts himself, but when orders catch up, he gets bored. I'm guessing he's going to make a couple to sell them instantly to the people who don't feel qualified to build one hit themselves, but these things, as a kit you put together, are $100. That is not an insignificant amount of money. That's about as much as a rival Nemesis costs at MSRP. Now they're substantially cheaper, but you get the idea. That being said, these things are 110% worth the price they charge. I, seriously. These things offer you so much value in what they are that it can't really be debated that Out of Darts is probably almost losing money on these. I know that's not a fact because that'd be a poor business decision, but it really shows with how much went into building this blaster and how much you actually get in the box that there's really not a whole lot of room to make a lot of profit on these things. Seriously, when you put together the fact that this thing comes with two Fang revamp motors, a pair of worker flywheels, a pusher motor, all of the 3D printed pieces, the little spring indents that go inside the magazine well and stuff like that, everything you could possibly need to put this thing together and have it firing, well, yeah, it's, it's easy to see how something like this could cost around $100. That being said, I have two of them. Why do I have two of them? Because I thought that I could dual wield two of them and basically use that as a primary. And we'll get to dual wielding them in a little bit, but single wielding one of these little suckers is a joy to behold. Now, I went with what was at the time, and in fact, I think still is, the slowest fire rate possible. And it's still too fast. This is the slowest fire rate you can get out of these things. Now that didn't seem incredibly crazy or anything like that. In fact, it's almost anemic by nerf standards today. I mean, you can get some hyper fires that shoot that fast. But for what I wanted, which was something that I could do a full auto option with, or at any time just do single shots with it, the slowest rate of fire is the way to go. You can make this thing empty a magazine like one trigger pull if you want to. That's not what I wanted, but I would say even then, that rate of fire is almost too much. It's really easy to double tap or just dump the entire magazine the second you pull the trigger, which is a little crazy. You basically want to use this thing as one magazine per target, which means it's pretty much required it's gonna be a secondary. There's not a good way of really using these, even with a slow rate of fire, to use them for one-shot tap kills, unless you're going through extremely confined corridors, which at that point, these things are absolutely going to dominate. I don't know why you wouldn't use these things over pretty much anything else. And there's not a lot of room left on these things for really anything else. There's, the, it's completely stuffed pack as much as possible. You got your battery that goes in at the back and sits up here. You've got your magazine well, which doesn't have any kind of latch or anything in it. It's really just got two small ball bearing indents that grip onto the magazine. It's not gonna fall out or anything like that no matter what you do. Yet it's really, really easy to remove an insert. And then you've got, we'll get to that. Then we've got the flywheel cage up here, which is using standard fame revamp motors, so it's like 130 size motors, with flywheels that were, you know, worker flywheels, things that are off the shelf. Although the pusher itself is one of those small little gearboxes that you can find on Amazon, 
with a custom 3D printed feeding wheel. So it actually uses a third wheel to control feeding into the blaster. Then of course you've got your rev trigger, fire trigger, two micro switches down here, and that's everything. And on the blaster itself, there's really not a whole lot. You've got a little thing down here that you can use for some kind of little foregrip or laser or something like that. It's all picatinny. You can have a sight up here if you really want to. Honestly, I'm almost on the train that like this whole rail, I could do without that entire rail to be perfectly honest. I'd rather have something else. And then you've got the muzzle up here, which is really just uh, a circle. But the hop up is adjustable and that's really important. So you can take test shots with it and see what way the balls are going that day. And you can edit it by turning that slightly and make sure they go in the way that you want them. If you want to fire around quarters with this thing, you totally can. You could just jack the hop up in any direction you need to shoot and that works perfectly fine. The grip is huge and comfortable. Like seriously, the only problem I have is that there's really not much of a dovetail back there. It's uh, there is a little bit, but as you can see, the fat of the back of my hand is kind of riding just in front of that magazine well, which is not perfectly optimal. And that does mean that while it's not exceptionally hard to reload, without any kind of guiding mechanism right on here, it's it takes a little bit of concerned effort. You can get good at it, but it's not like there's anything right here that could be used to guide a magazine directly into the chamber. And that's something that I think could be added, but that would obviously add a little bit of length to the blaster. But at the same time, I don't think would matter because you're gonna have the magazine sticking out the back anyway. These are seven rounders. Of course, it is compatible with the 12 rounders. I just like having as little on this as possible because it's a pistol and I like small things. And I don't know, I thought that was pretty good. Now I get what the design of this thing is supposed to be. It's a secondary. It's meant to be a secondary. It's meant to be holstered somewhere on there. Even though right now I can't find any kind of actual holster for it, one does not exist yet. I'm sure that's going to change in the very near future, but right now there's none. And I've had a lot of issues trying to holster this because this, that is my number one complaint today. I really wish this had some kind of like little grip guard, even if it was optional, because these massive rev triggers, while extremely comfortable, get caught on everything. And every time I try to holster it in something, like even in the front of my vest, this always gets pressed by something and it really annoys me. And I would even have these like in my box of stuff, like for travel, walking around between events and stuff like that. And all of a sudden it starts revving. It's too easy to rev this blaster. And considering that like, you don't really need fine control over revving, you need fine control over the firing trigger. While the Bobololo style rev triggers are really cool in some cases, on a blaster like this, I think it's entirely too much. I wish it could just be a little tiny button that I press in because I don't need to have super fine, great control over my revving. I just need to press in a thing that makes it rev and then fire the blaster itself. This could be alleviated by having some kind of grip guard, but then you start running into the problem that then it's not really as holsterable, so you really can't win. The only thing I really have against this is the fact that there's no kind of dovetail back here to assist in reloading and make it slightly more comfortable, and that. Both of those things are easily solvable. Heck, they could be bolt-on additions in the future for all I know, but those are my only complaints. That and the performance, and this is a given. I mean, it's a pistol, it's using standard flywheels, standard, you know, strife motors and stuff like that. There's a reason why Rival uses big old flywheels and big old flywheel motors, and it shows when, like, even on this thing on a 2S LiPo, because these are meant for a 2S setup, it only hits around 100 FPS. In fact, slightly under most of the time. Which is stock Rival. Which, uh, which kinda sucks. Because, uh, if you want to use these things as a primary, and, and hold on, it, it's, it's really difficult to get those long-range tapping shots, even, even with adjusting the hop-up with every other shot. It, it's, it's actually kind of excruciatingly hard which limits your harassment potential, which means the one thing these things are still really good for is kind of just like draw and empty. And that's exactly how I used this thing at Ragnar Oktoberfest. I took one, I pointed it, I held down the rev trigger, and I kind of just went like that. And I shot balls into a crowd of people, and hey, that worked. If I got ambushed by anybody, which did happen, all it was really, you know, just, uh, you're done. I just fired a whole, it's a little tiny blaster, hold it close to me. It's not like having a big old long rifle or anything like that. This little tiny thing that's really hard to even kind of get to, like, what is that? At a distance, what is that thing? Even when you're close up, it's like, it's this little tiny hip firing pistol 
that just dumped a bunch of balls into you. And now you're out. Really good about that. Less good about being actual primary. Like, is this setup right here, two of them, really worth getting? I would actually say no. I'm happy. I mean, I love to have two of them and run around and, you know, ha, they're like Cat 40s and Black Ops 2 and stuff like that. But reloading these things is... <laughs> trigger so much. Reloading these things is a little bit of a pain, especially this one, which sticks just ever so slightly. Ugh, there we go. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't really think these things are ever meant to be dual-wielded, and I tried. For science, I did try to dual-wield them, but yeah, I don't think that's worth doing. Sorry. But obviously, the future of the Jupiter is incredibly bright, because uh, it's already cut down as much as possible. So adding things to it is really easy. If you want to add on like the Juno stock, which is kind of like what turns this thing into a hurricane, a 50, 60 round capacity, full auto submachine gun kind of build, you can do that. You basically have the receiver, you just bolt another thing onto it that has all the internals you need to get things done. If you want to do something even crazier, like use it as a proton pack, that can be done. It's really actually easy because if you already have the proton pack set up, then you just plug in the hose and you're good to go. So really this thing is gonna be an absolute tear on the field pretty much everywhere, even if you're using it just like this. But it does lack that range and when you lack in range, especially with Rival, since you can't really get those accurate, precise single shots, you're gonna be relying on spraying and praying and that kinda just, it, I hope your wallet loves you because that's gonna be really, really difficult to afford to be able to do having those hundreds of rival rounds and losing hundreds of rival rounds in pretty much every single event, <sighs> like uh, Out of Darts is used to. But overall, yes, I'm extremely happy with the Jupiter. I think it's an amazing product. It was a lot of fun to put together. It's relatively easy to put together. And honestly, I think just about everybody should have one of these things. And if you want to get your hands on one, even if they're out of stock right now, you can check outofdarts.com, go to the Jet Blaster section. I have a link down in the description below where you can pick one of these things up because honestly, they're way too cool to pass up and they're only gonna get cooler as time goes on. I bought these myself. I even had to hunt his website to get them myself. And I'm still saying that. I am friends with Out of Darts. I like the dude a lot. But this is something where it's just like, it's, it's, I, I didn't get help and I really didn't just love these things. They're so awesome, seriously. Even if I have little gripes about them, they're all extremely fixable things and I, I hope they're things that are considered in the very near future. Let me know what you think about the Auto Darts Jupiter down in the comment section below. Do you have one? Do you want one? What would you like changed about this blaster? I'd love to hear it, but honestly, this is way too cool. I'm Walkom S7, thank you so much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one. And hey, if you're still here watching this video this far in, check out the link in the description. I've got a kind of Teespring store with some products up like the Deleter shirt and the Tag Back shirt, and even some little phone cases that I just made last night. Uh, some kind of cool stuff, and hey, if those kind of things sell, then I can make more of them, and you know, maybe people like them. If not, then nobody will buy them, and I won't make more of them, and then that makes me sad. I don't really know how to end videos. You gotta... Uh